Well, the impact of COVID-19 on international travel has had a devastating effect on the airline industry. And with our borders reopening up today, how many are actually going to be available to travel on both locally and beyond South Africa? And what is the new normal of air travel? So to talk to us about this, we've got Liesl Gerike. She's the head of Middle East Africa and India at Virgin Atlantic. Good to have you, Liesl. Thanks so much for talking to us. Good morning, Leanne. Thank you for inviting me to come and talk with you this morning. So obviously yesterday was a hugely anticipated announcement by the South African government to see exactly what can and cannot be done. Let's talk to you and, and your understanding. I mean, obviously now this can help you with your plans going forward. Yes, so it was obviously much anticipated, and I'll maybe just rewind a little bit just to, to talk through what we've been through in the last six months. So it's been six months since we've um, had any international uh, commercial passenger operations into South Africa, and it's obviously been devastating for the aviation industry around the world. Um, and, and for Virgin Atlantic, it's been uh, no different. Um, and, and really, for aviation industry, there's kind of two distinct ways um, in which the industry has been impacted. One is obviously the pandemic and the fact that people are, you know, concerned about um, getting ill or, or, or traveling or being exposed to the virus. And then the other part, which is um, you know, closely linked to the future and, and how demand will come back, is, is the impact on the economy and the availability of, of, of money or, 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 or the ability to actually purchase travel. So those two things have obviously, um, you know, are, are, are sort of two key impacts that we are seeing. And we've been working so, so hard over the last six months, lobbying alongside industry associations and working very closely with government um, through industries, through associations like BASA and uh, Tourism Business Council South Africa, Business Unity South Africa, etc., to really kind of put forward to government um, how we can phase in uh, risk-adjusted uh, travel um, to South Africa. And, and we are obviously delighted that earlier this month, um, President Cyril Raposa announced the fact that the borders will reopen. Um, and yesterday, we've obviously received significant um, clarity around what that would mean. Um, and it was anticipated that there would be restrictions. I think it was very clear from the outset that there would be um, uh, high-risk countries identified um, and that there would be restrictions placed on those countries. And, um, and that's the clarity that we received yesterday. Yeah. Um, and so now we know more and we can, um, you know, we can obviously plan accordingly, but um, it will be a slow uh, reintroduction uh, to international travel in and out of South Africa. Um, and unfortunately, at this point in time, because of the, the sort of long list of high-risk countries, there's 57 of them, um, it does mean that we will still be very much be challenged with getting that much-needed international leisure tourism um, restarting in, in, our, in our country. Yeah, that is, I mean, and obviously, I think, I, I would imagine a bit of a, a spanner in the works to you was, of course, the UK, because that, of course, is where Virgin Atlantic do have your major routes now. And that is deemed yes. as a high risk country for travellers coming in from the UK. So they're not allowed as yet to enter into South Africa. What does this mean for your business? I mean, let, let's perhaps get it from the airline perspective. You will still be yeah. transporting South Africans to London, but anybody coming from London that is not a South African citizen won't be allowed to come. Is that your understanding or perhaps you can tell us more? So it's a little bit more um, uh, sort of complicated than just kind of saying sure. anyone from the UK can't arrive, um, but I can, I can maybe kind of demystify a little bit of it. So yes, absolutely. Um, so for Virgin Atlantic, our, our, our key source market is, is obviously from the UK. It's where we fly from. Um, and also just interestingly um, for, you know, for those who are watching, this, uh, the UK is the number one uh, tourist source market for tourism to South Africa. It's mm. also one of the, you know, the largest investors and um, trade partners of, of, of South Africa. So it's a, a, you know, it's a significant blow, especially to the leisure uh, tourism industry that we can't immediately open up for leisure tourism from the UK. And, and uh, again, I think the, 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 from the outset, we knew that there would be uh, some limitations to travel. So, so the information that we received yesterday uh, in, in the ministerial briefing is that uh, travel will be restricted from high-risk countries um, and that limited business travel um, will be permitted. Um, and there will be a process that one needs to follow to get that permissions in place to, to travel. So essentially, leisure travel is prohibited from high-risk countries 
um, and limited business travel um, would be uh, would be permitted. So that could be diplomats traveling. That could be anyone who's um, got investment relationships with South Africa and tra and traveling for investment purposes. And then obviously from a South African traveler perspective, those who um, wish to travel out from South Africa internationally to the UK would then have to abide by those countries' regulations. So, for instance, the UK, there's a, a quarantine um, that you have to you go to on, on, on arrival. So I think that the important thing for, for anyone who's thinking about traveling is that they really need to make sure that they uh, familiarize themselves with not only the regulations in the country of origin, but where it is that you are traveling to, mm. um, to really equip yourself with everything that you need to know. And it's ever changing. I mean, the other thing that the minister said is that the 57 countries that's currently on the high risk list will be reviewed on a two weekly basis. So yeah. we have to assume that every two weeks that list will be updated. So I mean, I can't probably stress enough that people should just use reliable sources and gov official government sources to do the right level of research, check the airlines that they're traveling with to make sure that they have all of them, the administrative work. There will be brief flight declarations, one can imagine. There will be additional documentation that you would need. There's a COVID test that you need to undertake 72 hours before travel. So all of those things, you, you just stay on top of it because the last thing that you want to do is go through this whole process of getting to the airport and then not having all of the, the, the administrative bits um, lined up to travel. And, and that's, that's the reality is that there is, there is so many logistics that need to be followed through in order to travel, which is... Yes. It, it makes it even more unpleasant. So, you know, this, this, it, it is a saving grace to the airline that the international travel is open. However, yeah. I don't know if this is, I mean, for the airline industry, and something that I have read is that the only thing that is going to save the airline industry is a vaccine at this point in time, because it is just so difficult, you know, having to deal with not only a health pandemic, but an economic crisis, mm -hmm. and to try and fly through mm -hmm. both of those, it's never been done before. You know, how do you keep flying? So it's, it's a really good question. And, and you know, the, the whole, I mean, you would have read in the news and I'm sure uh, your viewers would have seen just how devastating the impact has been for the aviation industry. There are a number of airlines who have gone into business administration um, and who are fighting literally for survival. And it was no different for Virgin. I mean, right from the very beginning when we seized all passenger flying back in April, um, we realized that this was going to be um, not, not just a quick, you know, uh, you know, stop of international uh, travel and then a quick rebound. We realized that we were in it for the long haul and we had to make incredibly tough decisions right early on. And, you know, pre-COVID, so pre-sort of April, before we stopped passenger flying, I mean, we've literally to today um, would have half, halved our entire workforce We've retired every single one of our older aircraft in our fleet, so we only fly very young, very fuel-efficient aircraft at the moment. Um, and a lot of um, passenger uh, airlines will, will tell you that really the saving grace over the last few months has been um, the ability to really cost-save, reshape, reshape, restructure the, 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 their businesses um, refinance, which we've done um, successfully, um, recently announced the solvent recapitalization of Virgin Atlantic, um, and and really kind of now just sort of ease into the next few months of what is probably going to be a little bit of survival slash hibernation as we get out of it in the other end. But, yeah. you know, the saving grace really has been cargo flying. So, I mean, we've seen a huge um, uptick in opportunity from a cargo perspective. So, I mean, Virgin Atlantic is absolutely committed to returning to South Africa, even under these very stringent measures that are in place. Um, and we will return um, on the 18th of October. And we do aim to, even with the limitations that the government have placed on, on this high sort of high, with the UK being a high risk country, we do intend to resume our, um, our passenger travels. Interesting. I mean, what you've, you've brought out. So the 18th of October, that's when Virgin will be resuming leisure flights or, or passenger flights. Um, how many how many flights will you be adding in? Because that's, you know, obviously something that will be determined by demand. And I see that there are a lot of specials happening from most airlines to yeah. try and get the demand and as this, well. Th this is it. So, you know, loads of people are saying, oh, it's going to be really expensive to travel now because, um, you know, we, we, we can imagine that airlines are not going to be putting on the same sort of capacity on the route that they may have had before. Um, so our reintroduction to South Africa is four flights a week. So we would have previously operated seven flights a week. So we're easing in with four at first. Okay. And we're hoping to ramp that up over time. Obviously, as um, as we watch the travel restrictions um, you know, move, if there's an opportunity to increase, we will absolutely do that. 
Um, and we also earlier this year announced a restart for a seasonal operation to Cape Town. And that is still on the cards. That's planned for the 10th of December. But it is very reliant on whether we can bring leisure tourists to Cape Town. Um, mm. You know, you, we, we have to realize that Europeans missed an entire summer holiday season because of COVID-19. They are anxious and they are ready and they are excited about um, having what we call winter sun um, vacations. So, you know, leaving Europe and coming down south where it's sunny in South Africa, obviously, is a, is a much loved destination for, for British travellers. So, you know, Cape Town will happen, but we obviously need to make sure that there's, um, you know, a, a demand for leisure or that the leisure travel restrictions are relaxed for, the, for them to return. And, and then, you know, I think that for most people, even seasoned travelers uh, you know the experience of flying is very different to what it was i mean i the yeah. 54 international long-haul flights last year and i got on a, a joburg cape town the other day and i was like so anxious i had to complete all of these documents and pre-flight yeah, yeah. declarations and 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 so even the most seasoned travelers are, are, are feeling sort of the sense of anxiety so well, i think that now that i've done world. a couple of domestic flights yeah it's a whole new world so it I is think a whole it's just, new world you know, uh, and what, what I think it's in the future, what yeah, does sorry, this Leon. world look like? Because international travel is is something that people are very nervous about. Obviously, domestically, we yes. have, you know, um, you've got to wear a mask the entire time. Now, does the same mm. apply for international travel? You've obviously got to keep this mask on for the amount of hours that you're traveling. I mean, are there, are there things that are going to happen during flights that have completely changed as we know it? So... The short answer is yes. Um, so so as, as airlines and Virgin Atlantic, we have done an enormous amount of work around um, you know, reinstilling um, passenger confidence around uh, traveling. And, and, and the one thing I really want to say is that you know, travel is a, is a highly regulated um, mode of transport. It is probably the most regulated mode of transport. So the ability to implement regulations like testing, um, scanning, um, low touch environments, um, you know, Know, documenting anyone who's you know unwell is is so regulated compared to any other mode of transport so the first thing i want to say is that for those people who are thinking about traveling even under restrictions um you know they, they can they can feel safe doing so because airlines have undertaken um a, a huge cost a lot of measures to reinstill first and foremost confidence in people traveling but the ability to to guarantee to, to, to passengers who are traveling that they will be safe and they will, they will the, 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 the likelihood of contracting um, the virus whilst traveling is, 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 is it's highly unlikely. So what does it look like um, in future? So it will be a low touch environment. So, you know, when you'll get to the airport, um, you probably have to self scan your, your, um, your boarding pass as you move through. You will, you know, you, th there will be low touch kind of from a security and airport perspective, um, when you get through on board the aircraft, um, cabin crew around the world, you'll see them dressed in PPE gear. They will be wearing masks and gloves. Um, there's a very stringent hygiene wow. process, uh, pre-flight, during flight, post-flight, deep cleanings that, 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 that will happen um, throughout. Uh, there's something called the HEPA filter, which um, has, has received quite a lot of uh, uh, coverage in, in recent months. The HEPA filter basically recirculates the air on board the aircraft every two to three minutes. So basically you have fresh, clean air circulating through the aircraft um, continuously. And then obviously all surfaces and um, the lavatory facilities are, are constantly going to be washed. Wow. Meal services have been adapted. So, you know, so it's, it's closed, sealed meals. So yeah, there's yeah. nothing so that would be touched or be touched by someone else. Everything and, sorry, has I wanna changed. Ask you, I want to answer your question about wearing a mask. So, so yes, unfortunately, this is going to be the new normal. You will have to travel with a mask. And, yeah. and we will, um, to all passengers traveling with Virgin Atlantic, will get a health pack with four masks um, uh, and, and uh, hand wipes, et cetera, et cetera, available to them to use throughout the flight. But that is going to be the normal. And, and right. people should expect to be wearing masks while traveling. Liesl, thanks for talking to us, giving us a glimpse into the airline industry going forward, what it'll look like. And so that's what you've got to keep in mind when you are traveling internationally. Liesl Kerika, who is the head of Middle East, Africa, India at uh, Virgin Atlantic, talking to us about air travel and, of course, the talk that, you know, during this time, 65% of all airlines were grounded over this time. Frightening. Really is frightening.